You're Near the Wild with Matt Becker and John Norris, recorded in Anchorage, Alaska. Welcome to another episode of Near the Wild. I'm Matt Becker. I'm John Norris. Hey, and I'm Greg Shaley. The bus is happening. Oh, yeah. We don't mess around when it comes to the bus. <laughs> Uh, the, the living room kitchen has become an extension of the bus. The living, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's actually too warm out for the bus. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I've been noticing that. Uh, well, when I say I've been noticing an ex Anchorageite has been, uh, commenting on weather. And I think the most important weather is the weather that you're going to land in or the weather you're in <laughs> after that, it's really. It's just trivial pursuit. No, it is. But here's the deal. When Buffalo's going, you know, everybody knows from Easter, like, can you believe how much snow Buffalo? I go, Buffalo's supposed to get snow. Yeah. <laughs> That's not the big story. The big story is we don't have any. It rained yesterday. Our grass is green because it felt like Easter yesterday. <laughs> it's awesome. It did. This is insane. This isn't good, though. I tell people, I go, remember, this is like when you have too dry a summer. Bad comes from what we're having right now. Well, this all will have. I mean, it's, it's pretty early on, but isn't this not when, really? It's November. Well, isn't this when that you're supposed to be accumulating what they call snowpack, so right. that in the spring that that pack starts to melt, and then your your rivers become uh, uh, clean. well clean, and and basically they fill up again. They yeah. they raise the the uh, the water level continues to go up so that the salmon have a way to get up into the and uh, the mosquitoes yes, don't everything breed, don't breed in little pools it's almost like it's connected well yeah, listen we're all we're gonna die in the springtime but <laughs> now i'm enjoying not putting three sweaters on my tiny dog to take her outside that is that is a, a luxury it but it is cold here we could hang meat in the uh in the uh the house right now you should be. Oh, I'm cool. in uh, Sammamish, Washington, everyone. Oh, you're in Sammamish. Okay. Yes. Uh, we, we just left uh, Bisbee. Well, a little recap. It's been a while, guys. Yeah. Um, I know you've, well, we just explained you've been enjoying a prolonged uh, summer. Some Maybe a, a little bit of fall weather, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but uh, I got done with uh, the tour with Doug, and Tracy and I drove back from Detroit in the Suburban. Took about uh, three and a half days. Took a couple detours, and then we were in Bisbee for a while with our friends, uh, the Brechels, Brett Erickson, the comedian Brett Erickson, and uh, Mitchell. And now we're here in uh, Sammamish, Washington. Nice. Did you see me jump out of the two-story window to, to leave a haunted house? No. Where was that? <laughs> when we were driving back from Detroit, uh, I was talking to my brother. We were just out of uh, Joliet, Illinois, not the not the prison. Right. We had spent the night in Joliet, and we were uh, tra traveling west, and I was talking to my brother, and he goes, oh, hey, man, you should head over to uh, uh, Kansas City, Missouri. There's a huge haunted house over there called The Beast and the Edge of Hell. There's two of them. And uh, he says, it's good. You should go. And so we, we made a quick detour, still heading west, so we're still going kind of in our, in our direction. And we go there, and it's, it's a big, huge abandoned building that this guy bought, and uh, it's called The Beast. It's been there about 15 years. And I've never seen or heard anyone uh, tell me about what's inside it. I just know it's been there for a long time, and it's, 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 one, it's one of the best in the country. And we go in there, and it's, it's fucking disorienting. It's crazy. But it's, it's, nothing, it's nothing out of the ordinary, right? I mean, it's, it's still it's, it's a big event for the, for the community there. And at the end... The gal, we're on the fourth story, fourth floor up. And she goes, uh, you can either go down the slide here or you can jump out the window here. I'm like, what the fuck? Jump out a window. And what you do is, by the way, and no one chose to go down the slide. No one chose to go down the slide. We, we, had to, we signed a waiver or they weighed us to find out how much we weighed. I think that was just a trick. And then we went down a slide to the second floor and then waited in line for 35 minutes to jump out of a fucking window into like a stunt airbag. That's unbelievable. And, and, and no one's gotten killed yet. No one's put it on Facebook. Huh? Yeah. We went and we were looking at this before we went there to see what's going on. You fucking seriously jump out 
a two story window and it's not cheated you you look down you, you fucking your heart goes up in your throat it it's every bit of two stories man and it was it was a fucking gas it was fun but i can't believe there's like we took a vine of it and put it up and people my brother was showing it around to the people at uh, in the haunt industry and they're like oh that's there that's that's at the end how is that not like flooded how is that not yeah. the craziest thing anybody has yeah. done in a haunted house? I know, yeah. Anytime you got them lined up to jump out a window, because I hate, I hate heights. I'd wait 35 minutes and go, where's the slide? Yeah. <laughs> but no one, no one. There must be cobwebs, like real cobwebs over the entrance to that slide, because no one went down it. And there were, you know, young kids at this thing as well. And it was, it was fucking crazy. The one thing is interesting is, uh, w while you're standing there for 35 minutes and there's basically this big open window where like you would throw like hay bales out if it was a barn, right? There's one gal standing there and every, you could tell every time someone didn't jump out, right? Cause what you're supposed to do is you throw one leg out as you jump throw one leg out and your other leg kind of follows it and then you end up landing on your ass or your back, you know, and, and you land flat. But when someone would do something wrong, which you can't see, there's no way to see what's going to happen until you are standing there ready to jump. She would turn around and say, now listen, everyone, I'm telling you, this is the, <laughs> she would explain again how she would no <laughs> listen, everyone, what you want. You got to listen to me. I'm trying to tell you. No diving, no <laughs> diving. Head first is not an option. That was great. And Becker, I know you're you're you've got a thing with heights, but uh, you know, you're the one who said you do the uh you do the zip lines, you do the uh whatever you gotta do to uh face your fear. So Yeah, no, that's it. Do it once. That's cool. You end up in Joliet prison when you <laughs> jump out the window. <laughs> like, fuck, I'm on the other side of the fence. Or maybe that's the slide. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ, I should have jumped out the window. Oh shit. Like a true criminal. <laughs> That's what I, that's my summer vacation. That's what you've been doing. That's what I've been doing. I feel like it's been months, months well, since we've last talked. It's only been two months. <laughs> it has been months. <laughs> so it in fact has been months. Yeah. Uh, nice. In dur by the way, during that time, uh, we had people mention um, we had kind of a, a backlog of uh, the Vegas podcast with Doug, and then we did a Near the Wild swap cast with him, with him and Becker. Um, we had six podcasts go out in October. I, uh, oh, we had Jeff cause we had Jeff Tate here yeah. and, uh, um, we were, we were on his podcast as well. Wait a minute. Did you guys record one for you? Yeah. Didn't we, did we not send it to you? <laughs> That's, oh, so we got one, we got one in the bank. Oh, so this will be the one, uh, well, coming up next week. <laughs> Yeah. Jeff Tate. <laughs> yeah, we have we have like a deposit. Yeah, <laughs> I got stuck in that tube. That was <laughs> the banking tube at the drive up ATMs or the drive up uh, bank teller. Yeah, we did a lot of futuristic uh, 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 stuff, so we're waiting till it becomes current events. Sure, we're gonna have to change the tense on any verbs that Jeff Tate is was was planning on going. <laughs> to the, the salmon to the salmon hatchery it's uh he went <laughs> well it's our throwback throwback podcast yeah uh, and then we were also on his podcast and i got uh some texts from people i haven't talked to in like years that were like hey i heard you on jeff tate's podcast oh great and that uh jeff tate is a comedian uh originally from ohio and uh now in los angeles believe yeah he's in los angeles and he has a podcast called afternoon everybody it's quite good the and, episode i'm on at least is really good well we'll put the we'll put the link up for that and then uh uh well did you guys talk about cheers we can tease it a little right here we did we talked about cheers um you know i think we talked about uh, other things more i think we talked about like the nba and nfl a lot i feel like he should branch out a little bit so I mean, but it, it it's all related. It all it all comes back to uh, to Cheers. Yeah, doesn't as it always. everything does in life. Yeah, as in life. Becker and you were a part of that as well. Oh yeah. Oh, excellent. So uh, we'll get a double dose this week and next week. Excellent. What have you been doing, Becker? Uh, I have literally been just working and preparing. <laughs> uh, it's been a lot of things going on. You getting your winter bikini ready? <laughs> yeah i've been getting uh yeah figuring out the exit strategy and and how to you know and like i said this year it feels really guilty i mean i feel weird 
I'm literally like five weeks from leaving. That's right. Now, you, you've you got uh, your annual uh, pilgrimage to Costa Rica is coming up right after uh, New Year's, I believe, right? Yeah. And this you're going to you're going to dovetail from like uh, sweater weather to the beach weather. You're not going to have any snow shoveling or uh, like uh, slip discs from uh, falling on the drive. No, I mean, not yet. I mean, it, like I said, it got icy last night. That's I mean, the worst story. Let's not let's not panic here, guys. It's still <laughs> going to get shitty. I mean, no, but here's the thing you don't realize is here's what nobody's if we have cold now, like we should, like 15 below, we don't have the pack on the ground. It'll freeze everybody's pipes. We all die. We die. I'm I'm ready. I've been watching Walking Dead, so I'm, I've been prepping. And it's not going to be ready. like Walking Dead. Everyone oh, thinks dude. it's going to be like Walking Dead. It's just going to be dead. That's in the south. There's there's no sweaters on those zombies. Nobody walks in Alaska. It's just dead. <laughs> I walk everywhere because my car's been broken for the last month. Your car's still got, broken? I just got it back. Nice. Um, you I push bought, it home? <laughs> no, I paid a lot of money to drive it home. Um, but luckily, uh, Uber was running their... Um, oh, yeah, free Uber. Free Uber. So I got to Uber everywhere for the last month, which was great. But I recently I joined the, the hashtag delete Uber because Uber is kind of shady. Why are they shady? They drove you around all month, and now they're shady. You got your car back. Yeah, if they're not, if they're not charging you anything, you're the product. But wait a minute. Now you guys have had Uber up there for a couple of months, right? About a month and a half. Yeah, the city council just voted them in. So what's the, what's the problem? Uh, just uh, read the articles about the vice president. No, of no, no, no. Hold on, hold on. I asked you because I don't want to read. <laughs> I was about to tell you there are <laughs> lots of articles. Uh. Talking about spending a million dollars on a smear campaign on a journalist who uh, was critical of Uber, uh, their God view where they they track where everybody goes and uh, they keep all that information. Yeah, it's weird. I don't think real cab companies do that at all or airlines. <laughs> hey, Max, go to Costa Rica again this year. Hey, hey, John, don't you uh, don't you you've worked in the uh, news industry? Where would radio and TV be without smear campaigns from the politicians? Seems kind of hypocritical. But I am uh, sympathetic to uh, journalists, and when companies start trying to spend money to ruin a reputation of a person because they are saying things that are true about the company, I find that to be uh, disgusting. You know what? I think you're missing the whole point. They're not cutting their heads off. <laughs> I'm not pro-ISIS. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not saying <laughs> ISIS is great, but Uber is terrible. Did you see that couple that got nailed for the restaurant where they're putting in the back end of, uh, I'm sorry, hotel reviews and stuff? What? That if you write a negative review, they can find you. Who yeah. can find you? The the hotel. So if you stay at my hotel and then go online and write a negative review, I can charge your credit card. That's a, that, that's the fine print on the uh, where you sign. Oh, really? Can you believe that? I go, I'm sorry, but I'm not paying you $35 because you suck. I mean, as if it wasn't hard enough to like wade through the bullshit on Amazon reviews, you want to go buy a toaster and one person says, oh, this is the best, most uh, fantastic toaster. This is infrared heating is is the way of the future. We're going to do this. And then the next one is like, worst toaster ever. Could not figure out how to make it work. Does this take electricity? And you're like, where? where? One, one star burnt my dick on it. Yeah, totally. <laughs> <laughs> but Two stars, my dick fit. <laughs> <laughs> no, it works without electricity too. Unburned guy. <laughs> <laughs> but you have to wade through this this fucking mire of like is this guy really that dumb or is this a guy doing a fake one or is this guy you know it, it, he's obviously he's not is he a fucking techie is that the reason he knew how to plug in a toaster you have to wade through it techie. now what what if it's like all of it ha happens to be just people look i get a free cookie at the checkout desk if i uh if i give him a uh, four stars or above it's bullshit. Yeah. Uh, well, all reviews are kind of like, you know, are based on one experience. That's why you have to look at a whole a whole bunch of them, right? Well, but yeah, but find the one that you really, that, that speaks to you, that doesn't say, no, no, you should buy it, you should buy it, or the one that says, this thing doesn't work. The one that was like logical and says, hey, uh, this, is, this was my review, and it isn't some verbose piece of shit that just goes on and on and on, bloviating about, you know, uh, I didn't like that it only had these rubber feet, I like foam feet, not rubber, like some stupid stuff, like esoteric stuff that wouldn't matter.
Right. Personal choice. Yeah. Well, I do this thing where I, I read the reviews after I already bought a thing just because I like that, like, that buyer's remorse. I like to make it really bad. I like to feel real shitty about something I bought. If I'm, like, questionable about it, then I'll read reviews and be like, oh, it is a piece of shit. God damn it. Oh, you, you go back and you <laughs> check and make sure that people hated it as much as you hate it right now. Yeah, I'm just like, oh, God oh. damn it. Why didn't I read these reviews on this banana cutter before I bought it? <laughs> I just bought a banana cutter. I did. I don't have a banana. I didn't buy. I, I went to Costco. I forgot bananas. I have a banana. Cutter. <laughs> I go. I'm not taking it all the way halfway around the world to go test it in Costa Rica. I got to test it here. He goes, why just buy that? I go, because you hate cutting bananas. <laughs> you don't want to be a chump and take it all the way there. Oh, you want to yeah. you want to walk through the snow. Oh, actually, there's no snow. There's no so snow. That's fine. what I'm talking. Yeah. It's kind of banana weather. There's bananas growing on every corner. You don't even need to go to Fredmar. <laughs> Man, in Costa Rica, so many bananas, they probably don't even have a guy selling banana cutters. No. That's a business opportunity. No, but Becky goes, you just take a knife and cut it. <laughs> it's a big deal. We're, we're bringing this big, goofy thing down there. I go, it's a professional banana cutter, honey. I'm not <laughs> buying stock. I'm not buying, like, Fred Meyer's retail here. I'm buying commercial-grade banana cutter. Maybe she just doesn't understand the throughput, how many bananas you're going to get through there in a few minutes. Sure, you're making a banana cream pie. You gotta cut all those bananas. You know what? Show her. You cut the bananas. How many bananas grow on a bunch? And you go, how are you gonna cut all those? Yeah, no, she's <laughs> yeah. seeing personal use. She's not yeah, seeing yeah. the big picture That's here. Carpal tunnel. Oh, related, real quick. Yeah. Found the stuffed banana stand. The what? I think we talked about this. Remember uh, from the Renaissance five months ago. <laughs> oh, the oh from the uh, well, we thought it was. You thought it was at the Alaska State Fair, and everyone was looking for it. Uh, to no avail because it, you realized later that it didn't exist there. It was I at found the, it. It was I at the Renaissance Fair. Almost as good as the State Fair, yeah. the Northway Mall. <laughs> it's at the Northway Mall. It really is. It is. I got a picture of it. I'll I'll, uh, I'll send you the picture so we can post it in the show notes. Yeah, uh, the uh, Northway Mall is basically – it's kind of like a Ren Fair. I mean, it's, it's, <laughs> it's yeah. no, not many people go there. <laughs> It's and the people that, uh, it's an it's, odd stock that shows up. It's a lower income mall, I think, but yes, but the wig store is not for low income people. The wig store is very expensive. Yes, which an anomaly in the area. I think there's uh, there's a couple of cell phone uh, purveyors, kiosks, oh, and uh, they've got that. Isn't there like a, uh, a like Alaska's version of a of a mercantile dollar store yeah oh, no that's actually really good you know that's where i get my dollar razor blades they're 12 razor blades for a dollar what oh, you know you God. have your dollar club <laughs> i have my 12 razor blades for a dollar club yeah dollar shave club it's one of the best things out are there are these used razor blades no no these are the new little uh, double-sided ones so they put it in the old antique razor ah. yeah ah twin blade 1968 technology yeah but they came out with one get this so i'm I, i'm trying to find one at the antique store and apparently they now, the old ladies there, think it's gold. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Back up, Becker. I misunderstood you. I'm thinking twin blade, like the double stack twin blade. Uh -uh. You're talking the blade that lays into the, the razor, and there's one blade on one side and one on the yeah, other. Yeah, and you roll the bottom, and it opens up like a little coffin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I want to find one of these. So I go to the antique stores, and, and I'm friends with a lot of the antique ladies. Thank God. And she goes, yeah, I'll give you a good deal, $27. 27 bucks right i i remember seeing that when when you said the two blade thing right the guy from uh pawn stars actually is shilling one for like a as seen on tv type thing that it's a new one with 24 blades no 12 a set of 12 blades i guess that's 24 if you want on each side right uh 1999 how or 14.99 at bed bath and beyond hence i walk in <laughs> I'm showing John right now. Becker's holding it. It's uh, I don't. It's it's got his beard hair all over it. Oh well, yeah, use it. And uh, Becky's leg hair. I don't understand how it works. Now, see, Becker and I are of uh, a a generation removed from you, John. Uh, that's not a bad thing necessarily. But this is the razor that I saw my dad shaving with uh, back in the day when uh, shaving cream came from a can. Well. And you stood in front of that. You didn't have a robot with a uh, foaming finger that would, uh, you know, laser cut your uh, facial hair into your uh, your rap star styles. Huh. This is a whole different ball game. Well, I, I, uh, you know, I have a beard because I'm lazy and hate shaving, so I don't. 
know much about shaving, but uh, basically, you went in and you found you, you said no to the twenty-seven dollar razor, right? And I literally had the coupon for five dollars off at, at any any item at Bed Bath and Beyond. I went in and I looked down, and there it is, just next to the fans and stereos or whatever <laughs> the hell they got. I looked, I looked down and go, are you kidding me? That's what I'm looking for. And I open it and I go, okay. I go, does the coupon work? And the lady goes, sure. So $15, $16, I'm into 500 razors. It's the uh, MicroTouch, the one MicroTouch. And I believe it's called a single blade razor, if I do recall back in the day, because it mm -hmm. is just a single blade. It just has two sides to it. Um, because they, those are the ones that used to come in little packs with wax paper wrapped around mm -hmm. the blades. Yep. Yeah. And they've they got rid of the pack, yeah. so you do have to wash the razors. I think it might have some kind of industrial cleaning chemical on it. Oh, there's definitely a cutting uh, oil or something on there. Yeah. But I do like the case, Matt. Yeah. Uh, the case has a little uh, tiny little mirror on it, as if somehow you were going to just shave like by the light of the moon. And this, and you need... this is the, the Pawn Stars one? Yeah, the Pawn Stars one. Rick, Rick Harrison from Pawn Stars is uh, shilling for uh, As Seen on TV. Uh, the micro no, but it's really good. Like I said, it's it works just as good as the old ones. And you just got to make sure you line up the razor. I think if anyone has trouble, you line the razor up wrong and you tighten it down crooked. What? Well, why not just use one of the uh, you know the like sling blade knife razors, and then you just have a leather strap always sharp. You never have to replace it. I was gonna get one of those because those... that's a that's a straight razor. Straight razor. And you keep it in your boot in case shit goes down. Yeah, yeah, you're ready. Yeah. You know, um, the straight razor. I, I... When I get my hair cut in uh, Bisbee, this is the Gulch. It's been there since the 1800s or something like that. And uh, there is a lady who uh, cuts hair in the tattoo parlor, uh, Rachel Skye. And as a, uh, a, a kind of a cherry on top, she'll do the little neck shave at the end, and she will use a straight razor. And I maybe it just feels like it, but that stays uh, clean much longer yeah. than uh, using any other kind of razor. And that's that's the single blade straight razor, like slap it on the leather to uh, to uh, clean it up. Does she do the rabies foam where she foams up your whole face? <laughs> no, but I do get a a, 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 a splash of the rose water or like a a, a vitalis type, you know, a kind of a, I don't know made out of I don't know what they call it made made out of fresh sagebrush, <laughs> something like that. I don't know. Maybe, maybe we're regressing, and maybe maybe it's for the better. Well, I'll tell you when 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 the grid goes down. There's only going to be a few of us that are running around clean shaven. Yeah. Are you a banker? No. <laughs> you guys are fucking hipsters with your your single blades. Why don't you get a Mach three? Do you ever remember that from Andy Griffith's show? What's which one? Remember when Floyd Floyd would do that? He would have like uh, whoever uh, whoever in the chair he goes. Do you want the uh, what is it? The sarsaparilla water or whatever? Uh, oh, really? You know, Floral set, yeah, but he would take his cheeks and go, <laughs> <laughs> and he wouldn't put anything on him. It was really funny every time. That's another twenty-five cents. <laughs> That's right up your alley, Becker. Yeah, it was great. Yeah, well, uh, yeah. Uh, my banana story is uh, we were driving back um, the last night of the tour with Doug. Um, Doug and Bingo had to fly back from Detroit um, right after the tour ended the next morning. And uh, because they were going to Australia and New Zealand, which they're still at. And Tracy and I were going to drive the uh, Suburban from Detroit all the way back and uh, kind of take our time. Didn't really have any, any, any we're quick to be. So uh, Bingo had left a banana on the uh, dash of the Suburban, 2014 Suburban. And she had left the banana there three days before the end of the tour. So for three days, uh, the three of us, not bingo, but the three of us all kind of would look at each other when we ever noticed the other one was looking at the banana. And it's like, I'm not moving it. And that was just agreed. We're not moving it. And that banana stayed on the dash for 10 days. <laughs> they, de they decompose like hitchhikers. Oh, man. <laughs> that thing, uh, the last two days we were driving through, uh, we were going through Texas. Uh, oh. New Mexico and Arizona, and that thing was hissing like a, a tire with a slow leak, and it was bubbling out the most wonderful scent of it banana. It smells like banana bread in there now. Oh my god! It's like it's like we we were inside of that banana. It smelled so good, but there 
it was leaking all over the, the dash. Yeah. We you had, know, th those work like potato clocks. If you had had one of those uh, little things, they actually give off energy. You could have stuck in two prongs and got some juice. Yeah, it was bubbling. It was great. Mm -hmm. But that's Bingo's banana. Too bad I didn't have banana cutter. <laughs> that's the only thing that kept us from uh, from eating it in the first place. No one no had it. Cut it. Banana yeah. cut. <laughs> no one had yeah, a I'm sharp like, object. Just, just bite into it with my teeth. Ugh. Too bad you didn't have a straight razor. <laughs> could cut that thing into pieces. I discovered a, uh, a a new food product called Soylent. You guys heard of this? Oh yeah, that's the um, that like complete food replacement oh, drink. Oh John, it's a it's an open source uh, food product. Yes, um, <laughs> in Cambodia. In, it's it's think of it more as like an intelligently designed smoothie, if you will. It has everything in it, and uh, you're supposed to. Uh, Mix this up, let it chill for a little bit, and then, uh, I don't know, it gives me a, a, a faintly remedy. If you smell it, you're like, oh, that's not, that's not bad. And then when you're drinking it, it's, it is definitely chalky with a hint of vanilla, like if you ate vanilla chalk. And I, <laughs> I really, I, I powered through one container, which is three days worth, and I was really trying to only just eat uh, like 30% of my calorie intake should caloric intake should have been through this thing and this thing produces the most amazing amount of gas it did you it was so was this your for three days your only thing you were eating no or just one no day? and that's why i stopped because i thought there's no way like like you would have to like like ease into this thing maybe a, a cup a day i don't know i don't know how you do it i had to stop and this thing this cost me like 250 bucks anyway so it's more expensive than food. Well, you know, well, John, anytime you're introducing a new product and there's a there's a ramp up of a new system, sure. a new food system of some sort, uh, yeah, there's it's the price there's, you pay for being an early pay, adopter. But I'm I'm in it for the long haul. So at day four, I put everything away, put it in a box <laughs> with a with a big <laughs> with a big skull and crossbones with a with a, uh, a clothespin on it nose, and uh, that that's that's where it sits. Can you mix it with like? Uh, peanut butter and chocolate syrup. Yeah, you can mix it with that whatever you want, and well, that would it's make not, it better. It's not horribly bad. It's it, it, in it, fact, I I didn't mind the taste, and it, it really does have just about well, it has everything you're gonna want. Is it covered under like health laws? I mean, is it safe? I don't know. I I'm not familiar <laughs> with. What. I mean, it's is it covered <laughs> under fracking laws? If it gets off that much gas, <laughs> it should be. It's absolutely. Uh, well, it's a, it, it was born out of this, uh, this desire to uh, quickly get everything you need and to have it efficiently packed into something that's quick to make, uh, easy to store, and uh, relatively inexpensive. Can so, you tell me what it is made out of? Uh, basically oat powder, some cocoa, fish oil, canola oil, uh, and lots of different little uh, compounds. Everything a body needs. Everything a body needs. And it, and then, of course, after the fact, I went online and I did a, uh, like, a, it's called Soylent. And uh, the guy who, 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 Green. Came, well, the guy who came up with it uh, brought it to a marketing uh, consultant and they go, y you know, there's a movie called Soylent Green. He goes, yeah. And it, <laughs> they're like, you got to change that. He goes, Fuck that! I ain't changing it. And he just he just went off and he d did a crowdfunding thing, and got uh, half a million dollars immediately. And then when I bought it in May, I was going to get it in six to eight weeks. Uh, end of well, when did I get it? I got it at uh, September. <laughs> so the guy doesn't give a shit. I like that. That kind of uh, well, that's a bad term, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It sounds like if it has the effect on him that it has on you, he's giving lots of shits. Yeah. I don't know if you know how taxes work, but I think if you're going to send uh, Charles Manson a wedding gift, this might be your out. Oh, this might be it. <laughs> yes. One slightly used uh, uh, so Soylent food system. Is he going to send it to um, uh, third world countries to help people, or is he going to slap like extreme food replacement on like a really bright canister and sell it at the gym. John, this is a huge thing in uh, in the Bay Area, San Francisco. Huge. Mm. I, I'm surprised you guys aren't doing it. The fact that you're, you're not going to have any kind of, uh, well, you guys are, you guys are fine. 
Well, it's not gonna, it's not gonna, gonna snow. I was gonna say if it's gonna snow, I'd send you some. We're planting corn this yeah, week. Yeah, you're planting I'm corn. Gonna be, I'm gonna stick to solid foods as long as I can. That's kind of one of my life goals is eat as much solid food until I'm too old. John, listen. Some of us have to take care of those other people who have fallen into this this trap of eating solid food. And you'll just you'll just be you'll be you you can comfort yourself in knowing that the soylent people will now be taking care of the solid food people. Tell me about it when your teeth fall out from not using them. <laughs> I'm on that raw diet where I just eat everything raw like turkey. <laughs> <laughs> it's tough. It's chewy, but it's. I think it's good for you. <laughs> Throwing up all the time is absolutely great. Oh. <laughs> what are you guys doing for Thanksgiving? We're going to Becky's parents. Always. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to Stephanie's parents. Oh, he, he, neither of you are are taking any kind of a part in the kitchen for this. I'll probably cook some stuff. Becky, I'm, maybe I'll bring a pitcher of Soylent. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I'll, Becky, just just mix a uh, get a, 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 a pitcher of hot water. Throw in some oat flour and mix it up real good. No one will taste it. No, no one will touch it. You just go. This is my contribution. This is as much. This is as much of your uh, your daily caloric intake as any two plates of food. Becky makes her green. Uh, you know that green bean salad that everyone makes. Yeah, no one you eats. Know. No, but remember you eat the uh, onions on top. Oh yeah, the shoe I think string. That's the only way they sell those dried onions is for that. Those shoestring onions. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Those are good. Well, those yeah, but the the green bean stuff, I can pass on that. Green bean casserole. We went to somebody's house one time, and they go, this is my family's, like, really secret recipe. And they whipped that out, and we're all, like, going, uh, really? This is my is... grandma got out yeah. of the back of a French's. <laughs> she onion. smuggled it out from Auschwitz. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, let me see if I can get it right, Nana. So you say you get a, uh, a bag of uh, julienned green beans. You mix in two cans of cream of mushroom soup, and then you put a, a you top it all off with a, uh, a basically the whole uh, container of the French's shoestringed onions, and then you bake that in the oven. You're a fucking genius. Well, I found the man who killed my great aunt for her recipe. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so what's been going on in Alaska? I'll tell you what's been going on in Alaska. We had our election. Oh yeah. No, that was and a big one because you guys. That was huge. Yeah. And the thing, and and here's the thing, we waited. That was the thing. Somebody asked me on Skype. They go, or on uh, whatever uh, Twitter. They go, hey, why have you guys done a podcast? I go, we were waiting for the election results. <laughs> we literally had a hundred thousand votes on election night. Yeah. And fifty five thousand votes yet to be counted. And everybody who had a small lead was going, well, you guys should just concede. <laughs> yeah. You could concede. Give up. And they go, there's a third of the votes not in yet. Juno hadn't been counted, and they wanted Baggins to concede. He goes, you haven't counted Juno, the second largest city, or third, or whatever the hell. It's a capital, it's anyway. It's a capital. Yeah. And he goes, no, I'm not conceding until they count the votes. And he never made up the difference, which is unbelievable this state voted for the carpetbagger we did. But yeah. I think the whole thing's rigged. But we did legalize marijuana. Did legalize marijuana. Now, is that the recreation yes. variety of yes. marijuana? We now see it as, we see it as a three-wheeled ATV. <laughs> We still consider it, we consider it very dangerous, but you can now ride it. <laughs> and Billy Wayne Davis was giddy about it. Uh, so they still have to decide what that means. And um, I know there's some there's some lady on our uh, city council trying to get Anchorage to ban it. Ban it. <laughs> I saw Three that days after the final vote. Yeah, yep. I saw yeah. that on Facebook. Someone from Anchorage was like, "Are you serious?" I mean, and then isn't she from, isn't she from the Valley too? Oh, no, she's our city, Anchorage City Council. Well, yeah, I saw another one where someone from the Valley was coming in and, and yeah. you know. She's running for it. mayor and she wants to ban pot, which we just voted on. And everyone's like, are you kidding me? But here's the deal. We had the Raven Law. People don't realize it. It's the national news didn't even cover it. Anchorage is talking about legalizing pot. We had the Raven Law, which went back to our state constitution, which gave you the right for personal use of marijuana. Yeah. Now, they dummied it down in the late 80s. I think they changed it a little bit because you could grow up to so many plants in your house and whatnot. Yep. But under the Raven Law, the state charter, we had the right. So they made them vote on it. So get this. When you voted yes last two weeks ago on Tuesday, 
you actually went from ha- being allowed to have up to four ounces for personal use in your home. You reduced it now to one ounce you're allowed to have in your home. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, I swear to God, this is like a Dr. Seuss thing. But there, Matt, I can go into a store now and pay a lot more money. No, because the city council just ruled you are not allowed to have any store in Anchorage. Damn but, it. I got to drive to Houston? Yeah, they, <laughs> it's going to be like fireworks. You have to drive out of town to go get it, bring it back, and you still can't use it out in public. So you can shoot fireworks off in your house. In your house. <laughs> One vote for freedom. <laughs> and, oh, remember the lady that quit her job on the news and made national news? Uh, yeah, uh, fuck this, I'm done. How great is this? But she also disclosed on that same news station, by the way, I own a grow medical marijuana grow operation, and I'm going to devote my time to that. So go fuck yourselves. And she wanders off, right? Yeah. Let's get this. Our election board just went, well, that was a political statement, meaning you're a political action committee. We need to see your paperwork. Oh, my God. <laughs> She's going, they're subpoenaing her. And she goes, I'm not going to turn over my records under her real name, which apparently is not the one not she used. Charlo when she, Green. Yes, it's not Charlo Green. It's a different name. It's her gang name. <laughs> like charlotte eggers or something eggers yeah something meg Evers. hold on we don't want to be listed in the suit yeah but how (laughs) funny is that that she's now getting subpoenaed she's like i'm not giving you my record i was like yeah you are and oh by the way it's a felony and by the way if you get charged with a felony you a can't smoke pot but you also can't grow it (laughs) how great is that charlie brown's sister Yeah, so it's been amazing. Oh, the other thing is, is uh, the uh, Ferguson, the Ferguson, Missouri vote. What was that? Missouri. The, what was the the issue with the vote? The grand jury is going to come back. Oh, this wasn't a ballot measure or something. No, no, this is one in Ferguson, Missouri, where they shot the uh, kid. Yeah. <laughs> they said, "Don't worry, this is going to be fine," and then they call in the National Guard. Yeah. <laughs> and then they go, "No, it's no big deal. We're just calling them in. We don't think there's going to be any problems." And they're waiting to release this. So obviously, I think they're starting to say that it might not go the way people think. Yeah. It's kind of the OJ trial. You're going to go, uh, wait, he's not guilty? <laughs> <laughs> and so anyway, so the, the they're setting it all up. Then the best was when the, uh, the, the governor of Missouri, they go, okay, so you have the troopers, the local police, and now you brought in the National Guard. And a reporter asked, well, send, who's in charge then? <laughs> and he goes, I'll get back to you. He did a Palin. I'll get back to you on this. I don't know who's in charge. Somebody who can handle it. But when you call in the National Guard on the idea, but my point is this, they have to get it done immediately because they're letting attention build on this so bad. They're creating it. The media is creating a nest. And if you wait another week, do you realize it'll be Black Friday when you release it? Oh, my God. I know, which means they'll still be looting, but all the stuff will be worth half price. <laughs> Maybe that's why they're doing it, because most of the stores will be open. They won't have to break the windows to get in. <laughs> Come here and take what you want. <laughs> We've got old inventory. John, your you, your car's not running, so you're not going to Black Friday. Well, it runs, but I don't shopping. Black Friday. I made, listen, I made Bart go one year because, uh, so, no, last year. Last year was the year, because that was the year that all the stores opened early. Yeah. Well, they opened up after like 6 or 7 p.m. Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. So what I've always wanted to do was I said, hey, we should get drunk after work, wait that extra hour, and then go hit these stores and not really give a shit because we're Mm -hmm. just going to go hang out and make fun of people. So I make poor Bart do it. He goes, okay, Matt, I'll do it. So he drives. (laughs) I'm hammered. We go to the stores. Well, because they'd all opened at 6, it was like going in Sunday afternoon. It's just a regular... Yeah, we went to Target, and it was just 10 people wandering around, 14 employees going, do you need anything? I go, yeah, I needed it to be fun like it was a limited (laughs) time only. Bart's looking at me like, did you want anything? I go, no, I didn't want anything. I just thought this would be funny. I didn't even bring my wallet. I went a couple of years ago when um, places were still opening at, like, midnight, Mm -hmm. and we went to – me and a friend went to Target, uh, the one off to Cotton, and so just getting off the highway, there's a line – backed up onto the highway of cars trying to get to Target. It took us like 30, 40 minutes just to get in the store. Then once you get there, the line to check out wraps around the entire building, like the inside of the store and like zigzagging through aisles. It was crazy. And what blew my mind is there's people that with a cart and all they had was like one knife set where they had like some nail polish <laughs> remover. But you were waiting. 
Well, how are they like paying you to take these knives? Why are you waiting in this line? I used to always do the joke. I go, what I wanted to do was go in there and because people are so manic on just buying stuff that go get stuff and just put it in their carts when they're running off to get more stuff. Yeah. So you just grab, oh, guess what? You got to light up globe. <laughs> Who do we buy that for? Was that Uncle Rick? Maybe. <laughs> but the thing was, it wasn't even fun when Bart and I did it because it was just us. We could, we knew it. We, we were on a first name basis after 20 minutes in the store with everybody there. We're like, hey, Carl, how's everything going? Good. Fishing lures are on sale. You can't really sneak anything into Bart's cart because you guys are sharing a cart. No, yeah, it wasn't us. I'm, the scam was, the scam was Bart's looking at me like, can we go now? And I'm like, I could, we can go, I guess. That's Black Friday. Oh, and then International Day. We've just, uh, it sounds like we're going to legalize, uh, what, five to 10 million uh, illegals? I don't know what, what's going on with that. Uh, Obama's going to do executive order, and he's going to make uh, all the illegals that have been here for more than uh, X number of years are going to be legal. But they might put a little asterisk on it. And you have to have kids in order to stay. So all that time you made fun of Mexicans for having all these babies <laughs> when they don't even live here. They're going to be the ones who get to stay. And the guys who are just single, lived in a one-bedroom apartment and paid their bills, he's going to have to leave. We don't want those creep shows here. Anyways, keep the family. Well, I mean, yeah. wait a minute. I mean, go back to uh, civics class. It's uh, it's a long way back for me. But uh, uh, if the kid was born here in the U.S., then the kid, the can, kid stay. can stay. So really, he's not really doing anything you know, too almighty the problem, special there other than letting people the, stay who are here and have a family is basically what they're trying which to say. I, you know, where all the laws came from was in the forties. They actually put the laws in because they were worried during the war that we wouldn't have anybody to do any of the farm labor. So they made the anchor baby law. That man, if you dropped a baby on this side, you could stay. You made that up. You, you made care. that up. You anchor, I made, no, anchor I, baby law. Anchor baby law, yeah, that's the thing. If you drop your baby on this side of the border, you I get to stay. That's the name of the law. It is the anchor the baby anchor law. Anchor baby law. It's anchor baby law. You guys don't read it all. No. God damn. <laughs> Too bad Netflix cut out Bill Cosby. You'll never know what's going on. <laughs> I think he might be a rapist. I think um, it's there's, suspiciously there's uh, absent from one side of the uh, issue here. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, no, but here's the deal. When you read those stories, the stories are so weird. That one lady, three times she was raped by him, and she had to travel to three different cities to do it. Well, I don't believe uh, Janet, what's her name? No, Dixon. Dixon. Jan Dixon? I, Dickinson. I don't believe Janet yeah. Dickinson, but uh, I. But it's not that I don't believe her, her because her story so had that, like, uh, had some specifics. And, you know, I just she just seems like someone who would jump on the bandwagon, but she's going to be under a microscope with like everyone else who's doing this because he, I mean he's a, he's he's a huge star. No, but the thing is that you know they're throwing mud at, it, and I get it. But when you hear the stories, because there are two of them, the one the lady, uh, well hers was the classic. I came out of rehab, and he took advantage of me. I went to his place wearing pajamas in Tahoe, and he gave me a pill and a glass of wine, and that's when my life fell apart. I go, didn't you just get out of rehab? <laughs> And then she went and met him again and it happened again. I go, what? how many times did you go see him when he did this? I began to think you're dating. <laughs> I mean, I'm not. Do you realize? And this is the part I was trying to explain to somebody last night. In 1972, I think it was New Jersey, was when they repealed their law. You couldn't rape your wife. But up until 72, you could rape your wife and it wasn't a crime. Hmm. And I think Utah was the one that went the latest. I think they were uh, 82 or 83. But then you had to pick a wife. <laughs> I think Becker's going to law school. He knows he's pulling up some uh, some deep cuts. Well, the anchor baby thing, I I looked up that that is that is a thing. That is true. Yeah, they call that passport baby in uh, Canada. Yeah, passport baby. Passport mm. babies. Then yeah, mm. but uh, yeah, that was the thing was uh, uh, with the immigration one. Do you realize you're going to make five to ten million people now legal citizens who can have bank accounts? Uh, swap out their whatever current social security card they're using for a new one. Yeah, too bad for those people who have been uh, who've been <laughs> riding riding on the coattails of the immigrants. They also all get social security benefits now because they'll be U.S. citizens. Not to mention the fact that minimum wage just went up a dollar. So instead of working under the table for less than minimum wage, they're now going to get a dollar more per hour. And they're never cutting grass ever again. But Thank now, God California's having a drought. <laughs> but now they're getting taxed if they're not getting paid under the table. 
Yeah, they'll be taxed. See, so unlike that money order they keep sending to Mexico, and and they have been paying into the system, just not under their own social security. So their their benefits are going to be severely cut, or they're mm-hmm. going to be severely lower than what they would have been if they've been paying in under their their own uh, number for so long. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. it's going to be a. I I just thought these stories all together were just uh, fascinating. Yeah, I can't figure out which side of the fence you're on. <laughs> you no, no, but also. <laughs> No, that's the beauty of this. I go, and the Republicans are losing their mind. They go, we killed Obama. We killed Obama the election. He goes, you know, I'm just going to do this without yeah. you. They're losing their minds. They're like, you can't do that. And he goes, sure, I can. Guess what? 10 million more votes next election. Yeah, I don't I don't know, man. It, you never forget. You think Lincoln won because he uh, didn't free the slaves? That's true. Lincoln won because he did free the slaves. And the thing is, is once you gave him voting rights, then you go, okay, well, you should vote in your best interest. And I think 10 million Mexicans ago, you know what? The Republicans wanted to board us. I think I'm going to go with, uh, I'm going to go with the Democrats on this one. The largest voting block is now going to go in the other favor. Is that, is that another one of your predictions? Oh, yeah. Oh, hey, how close was that? Huh? I said slam dunk. What's that? Oh, I slam dunk. Oh, did you see what ISIS came out and they said? We're going to do the volcano of holy wars. Remember <laughs> those volcanoes? You I did. Said, not only that, but we have a volcano going off in Alaska right now that's now gone up that's uh, uh, interfering with air traffic. Uh, you got the one over in Peru going off. You got Argentina starting to blow up again. It's it's all happening. Is that the fruition of the, uh, of the prediction there? The what? volcano prediction? Oh, the volcanoes. Yeah, no, they're going off. See, that's, and that's ISIS it. Comes out and uses volcano just to make it insult with injury. John, do you call it? Is that 45 years from now? Uh, scholars are going to study these podcast recordings. <laughs> 45, and, a whole uh, 45 years from now? 45 years from now, I think. Well, because I think we'll all be dead from Ebola and the Alaska summer winter. They'll find out that the uh, the Soylent wasn't a good uh, food alternative. <laughs> the, the collapse. You know what you should be watching more than anything? You should be watching China right now in Hong Kong. Because all those, uh, the, the protesters, they've gotten way above Tiananmen Square quality of uh, rebellion against the government. Yeah. The government, they said they've been very tolerant up till now. But they're about to crack down. So you're going to see a bloodbath in Hong Kong. <laughs> All right, Becker, I'm calling the volcano one has uh, has, has uh, come true. That's one of your predictions. Yeah. Bam. I can't remember the other ones. I wrote them down somewhere. Yeah, I'll find. I'll find them in. Uh, and the uh, Republicans would take over the Senate and the Congress. Oh, that's right. And they did. We all got our asses kicked on our uh, guess when it's gonna snow in Alaska. We. Still- well, you know who won? A friend of ours. The one I married her. Her and, and her and her husband in the birdhouse. You house. officiated the wedding. Yeah, I did it uh, on the on the military base. I went up and did it. I did their wedding, and all of a sudden I pull up and and Jen Jen Lee, she won the uh, first snowfall prediction. Which was what day? Uh, it was back in what was it? It was uh, October second or something. Or yeah, it was, was it was earlier. Mine was my guess was October thirty first. It was like the s- second week of October. It, mm-hmm. it it snowed about a good inch or two, and then it. it now it's all gone. That was the only time it snowed. Yeah, yeah, it's just enough to stick. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, so I mean, in general, uh, I've wanted to do a snow prediction thing up here, like they do with the uh, Ninian Ice Classic. Yeah, where it's like two dollars a guess, and you got to get the exact time, minute, and, and amount, because you can throw the amount in, which is amazing, because then you could go quarter of an inch, third of an inch, quarter, oh. and do metric. Oh yeah, throw Americans out of it. Become an exotic <laughs> bet. <laughs> You got to go take the dogs for a walk? No, I was uh, working at my brother's shop, and there's something something going on with his internet there, and his site was down, and we're ready to, we're doing a, a huge annual yearly sale, sending the email blast out tomorrow, and for the past two hours, I was thinking I had completely crashed the site without being able to get into it at all, so uh, I'm a little bit relieved. <laughs> ah. Ah. Hey, yeah. hey, Shaylee, uh... You guys should hire me to come make a video about your brother's shop. Why does he need that? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> We're not saying he needs that. That's a that's a real good sales pitch. <laughs> I mean, who doesn't need a video? A little behind the scenes, see how he works, see see what it's all about. Yeah. Why does he need that? Uh, I, you know what? You're right. He doesn't. <laughs> Nobody really needs it. Nobody really needs a wedding video, but it's about the memories. Hey, look, I don't like this high pressure tactic. <laughs> sales tactic. I, you know, I try to let people, uh, you know, make up their own minds about stuff, and I just kind of nudge them along the way to 
get a badass video made that really drives up sales and makes, you know. We're making one for the birdhouse. It's going to be yeah. amazing. You should. Yeah. I saw the one that someone over, I think, ADN, which I don't know how that happened. Someone did one on uh, Gordon and the uh, museum. Yeah, was, yeah. Was that ADN right. that did that? Yeah, that was uh, that was my friend uh, Tara that made that. Yeah. How, how did that come about? I don't know. There wasn't a donation to the uh, Benevolent Journalist Fund or anything? <laughs> they, they may have said we need a... Uh, Uber did it. We need to sell some some ads to Coots. Why don't we go make a video about it? Mm. Well, that's one way to do it. That's the old Ooh. way you used to Ooh, do it. Well, that's the other big news at Coots. They're remodeling the kitchen, and uh, the bamboo guys are going yep. in. Yep, Urban Bamboo, John. It's so good. It's, uh, yeah, it's really good. I'm, I'm excited about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a uh, long time coming. Yeah, fantastic. Well, I'll put a link to that uh, museum. What is it? What is it? Coots? Yeah, Russian. Uh, it said something, a, a museum or something. We have more artifacts than, 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 than Russia does. It'd be great if it was a... Um... We have Rasputin's uh, toothpick. <laughs> it takes amazing pictures, too. I feel like they could have sugarcoated it. Because they're like, how do you get these? And Mike, Mike Gordon was like, ah, eBay. Yeah. I'm gonna dress yeah. the story a little bit. I yeah. used to go to, I used to, go to black markets in uh, <laughs> in P- St. Petersburg. Well, I, I remember walking down the uh, the basically this this long strip of uh, memorabilia on both sides of a walkway, and there was a gal from Russia. She was up there. She was uh, dating a, a DJ that we we had flown in. And she spoke, she was fluent. I mean, English was her second language. Like she, she recognized like photographs of military people and the, the czar and stuff like that. And so we get to this one poster and there's this short little uh, Russian guy with a, you know, the, the, the big coat and the, the big hat. And there's two doves flying above his head. And then like a, 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 a an older, like haggy, like, Russian woman with like a her head and in, in like a like a kerchief and everything and there's a saying underneath it and I said you know I've walked by this thing for years and I just wonder what what does this say and she looks at it and then she there's a little <laughs> yes yes and like what is it what does it say she goes I it's it cannot translate I'm like what the fuck what do you mean it cannot tra- you speak English you speak Russian what does it mean? That would be the translation part. She she had, she, had, she got I I don't know how to say what that says. What what is what the fuck? There's no there's no sentiment in your English language that can convey the meaning in this poster. Yes, it's it's not a, there's not enough letters in your alphabet for me to actually put words together to uh make a sentence that says what this really? yeah, There's no way their language is more complicated than ours. And even if it is, you speak both of them. Like guesstimate what it might say. Get close, right? yeah. And then she understood it. She laughed when she pretended to read it. When the vodka's gone, so are the votes. <laughs> yeah. I get it. We can translate. Yeah, you'll see, Becky. Next time you go up there, you'll see. Uh, <laughs> it's funny. So it's like it's it means something. Yeah, I'm, I'm a technocrat. I do that. I'll take a picture of it. I'm gonna shop it around. I'm gonna find, find out, man. Call yeah, apartment. guess what? You'll put it up on fucking uh, Reddit or something, and immediately six people will will respond about what it what it says. I'll have baggage do it right before it gets kicked out of office. I go, you need to take <laughs> this in and find out what this says. <laughs> You've just listened to another episode of Near the Wild. I'm Matt Becker in Anchorage, Alaska. I'm John Norris. Next to Matt Becker in Anchorage, Alaska. And I'm Greg Shaley in Sammamish, Washington. All right. You've been listening to the Near the Wild podcast with Matt Becker and John Norris, recorded in Anchorage, Alaska on Matt Becker's Backyard Bus, engineered by me, Greg Shaley.
Did you hang up? Do you want no. some? Do you want some? Do you want some noise? room noise? Oh yeah, let's do that. We're getting professional. Yeah, yeah that was know. good. I didn't have to prompt anyone, and now I'm the only one talking. Okay, hold on. There it is. <laughs>